Hi everybody and welcome to Starry Hilder's Homestead. Now today I'm going to be talking about the all-American pressure canner. I love, I love, I love my pressure canner and as you know I do a lot of canning here on my homestead. Kind of a, a staple for our self-sufficiency. So a lot of people have been buying these all-American canners and there's a lot of newbie canners out there so I decided to do another video on how to operate this thing. So if you have an all-American canner let's get started and we'll go through this baby step by step to make you more All familiar right, here with is it. just a couple basics that you will find on every all-American canner. They're all the same it just depends on the size. Number one this thing here is your weight. It is actually a pressure regulator and it lets you select three pressure settings. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, the pressure settings are a 5, a 10, and 15. Now, the most important thing about this little jiggler is you want to make sure that all the holes are, are clean. Okay, that's number one. The other thing on your canner is this little thing here. This is your pressure gauge. So two important key things is your pressure gauge and your pressure Okay, regulator. and now other things to become familiar with on your pressure cooker. This here is your vent valve and so important people whenever you start your pressure canning for the year you better make sure that you lift up that lid and you look through there and you better make sure you can see light on the other okay, side. The so other important thing, thing. And I think this was designed for me. This is a <laughs> this is actually an overpressure plug. If this vent pipe becomes plugged, so it really does have a really nice um, safety. And the feature. other really unique feature about this pressure canner is no rubber gasket, which is kind of cool. So as you can see. This is going to be a metal to metal type of seal and what the manufacturer um, recommends is using good old fashioned a Vaseline. And I've had some people uh, say olive oil works. I used olive oil just one time and it really didn't work as well as the Vaseline. So, but what you want to do, and I'll, I'll try to show you this, we will get up close here, is there is an inside edge here that is beveled and you want to apply a real thin layer around that bevel and that is how you are going to seal your canner. Oh, can you see that? There you go. Ah, just like that. All right, and now we're ready to fill up the canner with some water. And People, this is really important. Um, this is the thing. If you put not enough water in your pressure canner, you could boil it dry. It's not a good feeling when you're boiling stuff dry. And if you overfill it, mm, that's probably not good either. So listen very closely with this all-American canner, and it doesn't make any difference again what size you have. You do not want to fill it more than two-thirds full, okay? And that's two-thirds full when you're doing stuff like soups and stews. Now, when you're cooking foods that expand, and today I'm doing a pinto beans, so things like your beans, um, they say, Fill the cooker half full. And when they talk about half full, that means half full with the beans and half full with the water. And I'm, I'm going to show you because, like I said, I'm doing pinto beans today. So I've got a really awesome I'm doing example my, for you guys. I'm doing my no-soak pinto beans today. So you see I've got them all ready. I've got my water um, heating up. And then what I did is, my, this recipe calls for about an inch and a half of water in the canner. Just an inch and a half. Okay, so the next step is filling up your canner. So, it doesn't make any difference what you can, but people at home, if you are new, make sure you um, follow the recipe once again for preparing your jars. Because every canning recipe is going to be a little bit different on sterilized or not sterilized. So, today... As you see, I am doing, excuse my reach, my pinto beans. And the thing I love about this All-American canner is it's a big one. So I can double stack and I am on a pinto bean-a-thon. So once I get these squared away in my canner, 
I am going to add my second Now we rack. are to the part where I'm going to tell you people to stop, stop, please, and pay attention to Starry, because I am going to go over how to put this lid on and how to secure it. Very, very important. So come on now, stop and pay okay, attention. Okay, this is what the canner looks like with the lid on. And I'm showing you this because it has a little indentation right on the canner, and on the lid, it has a wonderful arrow. Look at that. You see that arrow? So when you put that lid on, you are going to line the arrow up with that indentation. Now, this is a tricky lid. It's, it's, it's a nice lid, but it is a little tricky. So you're going to try to line it up as best you can, and then you're going to get your knobs, these little screw things, and flip those up, just like I'm doing. And sometimes you might have to futz around a little bit. And just once be patient. you get them all flipped up, then what you're going to do, this, this is where you really got to pay attention. You will be tightening each screw, each of these knobs, across from each other. Opposites. 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 Very, very important with securing okay, this Okay, people, lid. this is a number one tip as I stand here behind the steam escaping from the vent hole. Ten full minutes on any canner. Doesn't make any difference if you have a Presto canner or an All-American canner. When you get that pressure, that, that canner going, you got to release that pressure. So it okay, comes right so out of that I have had hole. this going for 10 minutes, and now, depending on your um, canning recipe, you're going to take your weight and you are going to put it right on there. Now, my pinto beans require 10 pounds of pressure, so there we go. And now what's going to happen is you are going to wait for that little jiggler there to start jiggling. And once it starts jiggling, people, this is the exciting part, then you're going to start your, your timing for your recipe. Now, I'm doing pinto beans, so as soon as that baby starts to jiggle, Oh, I'm jiggling. <laughs> I'm going to set my clock for okay, 75 so minutes. You're done canning. Now what do you do? This is the very, very last step, people. You need to let your canner sit. This is where patience is a virtue. Don't try to fit futz with the jiggler or any of the other things. Just let it sit. Now, sometimes it takes a while for the pressure canner to cool off. But that's okay. It's not going anywhere. And then when it is done, you can take this off, and then voila, you're done. And then, oh, the fun part. The fun part is undoing all of your little knobs and then seeing what's inside. And this is what I love. Okay, and that's done. And still be still be careful because you know it's hot. There's there's still going to be a little bit of steam in there. But the, this is this is uh this is live action with Starry Hilder. Okay. Oh, oh! I can smell my pinto oh, beans. Look at this. Oh, pinto beans! And you see how they're kind of still cooking? That's normal, because it's going to take a long time for your canned goods to cool off. So at this point, you can take them out of the canner, which I usually do, and I just put them on a towel and I let them set out, and then you will hear that wonderful canning noise. And then you're done.